please tell us the premise for the film Dagger. Um, Dagger is um, a found footage uh, horror film. Um, I think it's safe to say it is intended to be comedic um, in, a, in, a, in a gentle way. Um, it's about um, uh, it's about a, a team of uh, a, a, a film crew who uh, are shooting an advert um, and they go and make their advert in this uh, beautiful but very, very scary house. And um, they are at the same time as they're shooting the advert, um, they are also shooting the behind the scenes for the advert for all the uh, uh, the marketing team. Um, and, and that's one storyline in the film. So you've got these guys shooting an advert, uh, actors and crew. Um, and then in a separate storyline, um, you have a pair of fantastic um, YouTubers who uh, they have a YouTube channel where they uh, they set up heists on the sort of Robin Hood style heists and they steal from the rich and they um, pass the stuff out to uh, to people and to their followers and to people that need it. Um, and so they've come up with this wheeze, um, this ripping wheeze um, to um, pose as caterers for this, uh, this film shoot um, and um, to basically steal everything there and uh, they film it all and then their followers are all like, yay, you're beating the man and um, uh, and everyone has a good time. Um, but when they turn up, the house is deserted. Um, and what happens is that through the film, the storylines merge um, and you find out what has happened to the film crew um, and see what the YouTubers go to as well. And I guess I probably shouldn't say much more than that because it's probably a bit too much of a giveaway. Was there something about your character or even working with the director that made you want to be a part of this film? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, it's, and I have to hasten, it's not not something really about my character because we were just mainly asked to kind of come along and basically be ourselves. Um, and um, I well, but within the sort of confines of the characters made, um, hence the uses of usages of all our our, our own names and stuff. I like to think I, I'm a bit less uh, mm, prima donna ish, than... but um, just Tori and Matt are uh, so Tori Hart is the producer, um, and Matt Butler Hart is the uh, no, sorry, both Butler Hart's um, is the director. They co wrote it. They're very old friends of mine. Um, and I really, really love the way they work. Um, I think that what they do with material and the way they go about doing it is awesome. I love their energy and I love their output. Um, and um, they'd previously shot um, a, uh, a a sort of, I think it was a found footage film. I'm not sure, actually, I'm not sure if it was a found footage film, but it was shot on iPhone, in their, their film Infinitum during lockdown. And they basically went out and shot it themselves. Um, and I think that's really cool. I have I have a huge respect uh, for anybody that got up during lockdown and did something really cool. A lot of people were doing it. And I just think finding creativity, um, I think such a, I was very, very fortunate um, that um, I wasn't directly touched by COVID. I, I, I've had it myself, but, you know, I didn't experience any tragedy with it. And I know that a lot of people did. And it was a, obviously such a complicated time. Um, for everyone we actually had our first daughter during lockdown and so that you know that was our kind of complicated area um but i have so much admiration for people during that time uh, who were using the time to to create um positively and to share things with people to distract to entertain i think there's a lot of great comedy that came out of that time um, and these guys went out and shot an amazing film during that time. I think that's absolutely incredible. And I just, yeah, I have so much respect for them for that. Um, and this this came up as an opportunity. They were they were going to go and shoot a found footage film in a house in Wales for a couple of weeks. Um, and it was an opportunity to go and spend some time with them and and all live together and and play around a bit. Um, I think the found footage thing is it's just a fascinating genre to play with anyway. 
um, because stylistically shooting it is obviously so different to how you normally work. Um, it involves a lot more improvisation naturally um, and it makes it a really, really collaborative filming process. Um, and yeah, it just, it sounded like a whole lot of fun and, and it really was a whole lot of fun and I'd love to work with them again. You did say that they had everyone's sort of real name in line for their characters, at least for you as well before filming. Uh, that was just a, a nice bonus as well, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. How was then Matt originally described to you? Uh, I'm afraid I can't remember. Um, it um, just, I think the character is was originally described as, uh, I think the word pretentious was probably in there. Um, and uh, we, I, I think we knew more that, you know, there were these two acting characters who were a real handful um, and everything was going wrong on set and, and they were kind of not really making anyone's lives easy about it. And we were kind of given that and then just like, you know, go and go. Um, and then there was there we, there was a little bit of tension between the two acting characters as well. And again, like we're just giving like little snippets of like, and now go. Um, and again, like that's a really lovely thing to explore um, because for reason, well, I can't really go into why without spoiling the story a bit, um, but it afforded an opportunity as an actor um, mm -hmm. to kind of close off a lot from the what's happening in the overall story. Um, because my experience as a character is quite siloed. Um, and there's something really nice about, if, uh, you know, as, as as an actor, there's something really nice about knowing that you're doing a, you know, a, a horror film, a genre film um, that uh, gets quite nasty um, in total oblivion. Because it's not even like, you know, a lot of horror films that you see, and, and actually it's true for characters in this as well they become aware of what's going on around them. I, 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 my character doesn't really have an opportunity to do that. Um, and um, so it's like the whole world that, you know, the storm is gathering around us and are just completely blissfully aware of the whole thing, um, which is a very nice position to be in. Um, and, and very, again, just very fun to play with. Were you familiar then with any of your co-stars before working with them here on Dagger? Um, I met um, Graham Butler a couple of times before. He's a lovely guy. Um, Emma I'd met a couple of times before. Very nice. M Matt and Tori I know very well. Um, and the others I didn't know. Talk about working then with director Matt Butler Hart. I know uh, you're familiar with him from working with him before, but when it was on Dagger, what was it like working with him? I'm, I promise you he won't see this, so his ego won't get any bigger. <laughs> I'm sure he'll see it. Um, <laughs> I haven't actually worked with him before. Oh, you were just familiar with him? I hope I'm right about that. He'll probably tell me off for saying that. If, he'll be like, we did this amazing film together and you, you know, we spent 10 years of our lives doing it. I don't <laughs> think I've worked with him. I'm sure I haven't. I think there was, there've been a couple of opportunities that have almost come together and we haven't done it before. Um, um, no, no, he's, he's just a, he's a lot, he's an old friend of mine. Um, okay. So we, we go way back um, and um, we've kind of been in parallel for a long time. Um, I, I, he's, he's awesome to work with. This is an unusual experience with the director because because it's the 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 cast's job to capture all of the material um so again it's a very different type of framework to what one normally works with um in terms of the structures around the filming um and unsurprisingly i wasn't entrusted with a camera i think that's very sensible for everyone concerned <laughs> um i don't think that that would be a good idea for anyone um but um it was it was just, it, it had to be completely collaborative because they were letting the idiots run the asylum. Um, you know, the actors were holding the cameras. Um, and so um, Matt was, he was sort of co obviously coordinating all of that. And um, he has a wonderful manner. He's a very kind, supportive, um, enthusiastic director. He's a lovely actor's director as well. He's 
he's he's very very interested in in performance and in communicating with the actors and that, that's not always the case you know some people are much more interested in the visuals and people have their different um areas of expertise um but no he's he's a really really lovely director to work with although this you know caveat that this is a sort of a different style of of work it might be horrible in normal movies i don't know <laughs> <laughs> There are so many intense scenes to this film. Yeah. What were some of the scenes that maybe challenged you or even work that you're most proud of for this movie? Um, well, the hardest one really is the switch between, again, I can't go into too many details, I guess, but sure. the moment at which it goes from just being an ordinary photo shoot um, to some things going very very badly wrong very very quickly i love a, <laughs> i did a uh a, a, a gothic thriller last year a remake of frankenstein um and it had similar opportunities in that which um you know a, a lot of the genre stuff can um uh, is can be quite heightened right um and so mm -hmm. the experiences of the characters in it um in the real world, you talk about it, it's like, well, that's ridiculous, that doesn't happen. Um, in this, <laughs> I can't give away what happens, but there are things you're like, well, that doesn't happen in the real world because we don't believe in X, Y, Z, right? Um, in Frankenstein, I had to walk into a room and see my dead father uh, reincarnated as a monster. Um, <laughs> and, um, uh, and you know, your sort of rational brain looks at that and goes, well, that's stupid. Um, and... Um, the fun thing as an actor is looking at it and going, yeah, well, my rational brain is kicking against that. And that doesn't happen in the real world. And I know that doesn't happen in the real world. But how do I get to a point where this is a very, very real experience for me? I remember the director on the last film I did talking about it as um, th there's in a moment in Aliens where Ripley walks in one of the Aliens films where Ripley walks in and sees like a load of herself. And like you, the camera stays on her and her experience of what that is. And that's ridiculous. You walk into a room and see loads of clones of yourself, like process that, that doesn't work. We know that doesn't happen, but somehow as an actor, you've got to make it real. Um, and that's fun because it's really hard because you feel like part of your brain for the whole thing is just like, this doesn't happen, this doesn't happen, ghosts don't exist. Um, people don't come back to life. Whatever, whatever the scenario is, doesn't exist. And yet somehow you have to get emotionally invested in it. Um, and, 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 and it has to be like 5,000% real because it's such a, a strenuous emotional situation um uh, the, the, that's that's the most fun stuff to play and kind of pretty much the hardest hardest bit to get into as well i think was adrenaline going at an all-time high for this film especially how do you tend to shake off a long day of being on set well this was lovely we were all staying in the house together it was uh the, the budget was fairly modest and um so we were all just hanging out together having communal meals um and a couple of drinks and blowing it all off at the end of the day and and it was it was just a really close-knit group of pals um and it was very 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 good fun um and actually in stuff i've uh, other stuff i've done very similarly really people often will get together for a bite to eat at the end of the day and a couple of drinks and uh yeah just kind of you know talk through what it's all been like because it is like whether it's just a long day or um whether you're dressing up in extraordinary prosthetics or whether you're throwing yourself around the place or whether you're going through really heightened emotional scenes or whatever or um whether you're trying to go through a heightened emotional scene and someone's telling you that you know your chin's not positioned in the right way or whatever right there's there's a whole load of practical considerations that come into all of this stuff um and um we all often generally just like talk it all off at the end of the day but this was particularly nice because it was such a tight group of people and uh, uh and and just yeah very very good fun a bit like shooting a film and having a house party at the same time <laughs> what do you think it is about dagger that's sure to make it such a standout sort of horror comedy mixture mm -hmm. well look conceptually i think the way they put it together um in terms of the stories i think it's great i like the underlying premise um i think it's fun um i think it's not trying to be bigger than it is i don't think it's trying to be i, I think it's doing a very good job of what it is 
I think the performances are good. I would say that, but you know, um, You're everyone, else is, <laughs> everyone else's performances are good at least. Um, and uh, and I think it's good fun. You know, it's a uh, it's a quick film. It's I think it's ninety minutes, and and it, it just picks you up at the beginning. I have to say, um, uh, Ellie and Riz, who are the YouTubers, I hadn't met them before a screening of it because our storylines don't coincide. Um, and I didn't know them previously. Um, they are phenomenal and their characters really like push the whole thing through um and um and it's just that they're great fun as characters as well it's really good fun to spend some time with them um and then it all goes seriously wrong and that's equally fun um <laughs> to be involved in and be part of it and they're like oh god it's horrible um so i think it's just a you know very enjoyable film within this genre um and, and does what it sets out to do really well. I think I think Matt and Tori have done a fantastic job with it. I really agree. I think it's so it's funny, it's got a heart, it's got a humor, and it's an edge of your seat watch as well. So certainly uh I, I really recommend watching Dagger myself. I've seen the movie. Good. Well, I know you have some personal things going on lately, but have you been working on any movies recently? Um, so I have sort of segued a bit into not a bit i've segued into producing and writing um i have a film coming up this hopefully shooting this summer that i wrote that's about female pilots in the second world war cool um, and i can't say anything about it because it's quite <laughs> big and it's got quite a lot of big people involved in it um and i have a tv series that i've commissioned from with a co-producer um from a bestseller um that we are hoping to film next year um, and then oh, some other stuff following up on that as well. Um, so you have your hands full, personally and professionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Busy, busy time at the moment. What would you like to say then to everyone who are fans and supporters of the incredible work you do? If I do have any fans and supporters, massive <laughs> thank you. I'm just unbelievably grateful. Um, it's uh, it's a very long road. And uh, it's always, do you know what? I went to the theatre last night. This is a bit of a segue. Went to the theatre last night, see Hades Town, um, and waiting to see it for, I don't know, I must have booked tickets nine months ago or something. Um, and my wife almost couldn't come because she's due to give birth next week. Um, and she did in the end, which was amazing. And it's such a brilliant thing that we managed to share. And I turned up so excited to see it anyway. And a very, very dear friend of mine was playing one of the leads in it. And I had no idea. And she's a lady called <laughs> Melanie LaBarry, who I did uh, a show with, um, a Brexit Tiffany's uh, production about almost 10 years ago now, no, eight years. Wow. Um, and, and seeing people doing brilliantly um, and the support that they get um, to do it is is just astonishing. And I was I was so grateful that 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 I'd been able to kind of know her and be part of that in some way. And I was so like gobsmacked at how fantastic she was and how brilliant that she was. Um, and I know I don't know why I'm saying that in in response to your question about fans. I realize that's I thought there was a link there. I'm sure there was a link there. Um, I was I, I guess like I was feeling like a massive fan of hers and and it was amazing to connect with her over that. Um, and and we were talking a bit about the support and and, and the route that we have to, to to get through to to these moments where we do end up doing stuff. She's actually just been on a massive rising star since I worked with her. She's been done astonishing things. Um, but it's just, it's so wonderful to have um, support from people when you know it, when you don't know it. Um, and and it kind of means the world. Sorry, I realise actually that story probably is a complete uh, red herring. <laughs> if you like, I can edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> if you, just, just uh, if you'd like, I can edit it out. But uh, it's, I think it's uh, endearing to you. I think it speaks to my character. <laughs> All right. Well, 